Hi everybody, and welcome to Waggers' Wings episode 18. I'm kind of dumbstruck that I've made it to episode 18, but here we are. I'm also slightly amazed that it's taken me this long to do a video on actually flying the Fokker DR1. Um, after all of these years, I finally decided to break the back um, of the DR1 and really try and learn um, how to fly it. So what I want to do is, because I'm still relatively a beginner with this aircraft, despite the fact the sim's been around for years, is have a look at some of the fundamental basics you need um, just to get the thing running. It is not a, a beginner-friendly plane. It's strengths and weaknesses, and then just a bit of a further discussion about the plane. The first thing that you need to sort out, annoyingly, um, is the response curves. So it shares a similar fate to the SE5 in that without response curves adjusted, the nose of the aircraft wants to pitch up all of the time. So if you go into the options responses, um, choose the DR1 and then choose the, um, the pitch, the elevator. You can see here I have configured this with these settings. Please, please feel free to use those so that when there is zero input from the controller, um, there is about 40-41% uh, nose down. And I actually took these responses from Nooney, who has a very, very good video on this. Um, so if you want to see how this looks like on external view, you can see that the elevator is constantly positioned to keep the nose of the DR1 down. Very, very important to uh, get started on this plane. The next thing you need to learn is how to, uh, believe it or not, turn right and left. Now, uh, Requiem does a good video on this, but just to um, re-emphasize this, when you're turning right and left, you need to um, first use the rudder, a little bit of rudder. Um, it also needs to have the nose down. Um, the DR1 will turn to the right fine with the nose sort of around the horizon. But you can see here, if you try and turn left, um, it's going to try and pull up the nose. So you want to try and keep that nose uh, down when you're making that left turn. One little trick you can use when, um, if you go into the sort of the fish flip-flop um, phenomena you can see there is to use the blip switch. Now if you don't know what the blip switch is, I think I've talked about it before, it essentially cuts the engine temporarily and that will remove the effect of torque. So you can see here I have um, taken off, the, uh, push, push down the blip switch and it allows the, uh, the, the, the DR1 to stop being pulled so violently to the right. Um, generally when I turn left I try and keep the nose down if possible and if I do pitch up, um, then I use the blip switch to try and correct that. You, you do, will you lose uh, a little bit of time on your turn, but it's kind of essential. By far the most difficult thing to master, as I've discovered, on the DR1, and it's taken me some time to get used to it. I think I've talked previously about uh, when dogfighting the DR1, um, particularly if you're boom and zooming, if you follow up your attack, attack with a climbing left-hand turn, you can see the kind of difficulties faced would find the DR1 particularly for a pilot who is a bit of a beginner like me. So again you see here I'm using that blip switch just to take away that torque effect and bring the nose down. Probably the most fundamental thing you need to learn when flying the DR1 is learning left and right. Sounds simple, annoyingly not. So being the glass half empty kind of guy that I am I first want to talk about the DR1's weaknesses. Um, the camel the legendary stop with camel can outturn the DR1 if the, the Fokker um, is at a lower altitude and therefore the camel has more energy. So if the camel is going faster or um, it has an end, uh, a height advantage, um, it can get inside the turn of the DR1 to the right. Very annoying, I learned this the hard way flying on some multiplayer servers recently and um, first trying to learn the DR1. Um, I found when I was flying against DR1 in the camel that very often I would be upturned flying to the right um, going up against the DR1 in my camel um, but uh, what I wasn't using is an energy advantage. I've seen other um, camel pilots talk about this before um, that is one of its disadvantages. Other disadvantages include a very poor climb compared to some of the, um, the faster planes like the SPAD and the SE5. This is annoying, it's one of the historically inaccurate things in the sim. Um, if you've ever read uh, the memoirs of some of the Great War pilots, the DR1 pilots, they will constantly talk about out climbing their opponents. Unfortunately, if you try and do this, you will fail. So that's one of the things to try and avoid. Strengths of the DR1. Um, well, it doesn't have many weaknesses, it has a lot of um, strengths. Uh, it is fantastic as a turn fighter. Um, as I've said just now, if the camel has the energy advantage, um, then you might find yourself in trouble. 
If not, um, you've kind of got the edge over pretty much any plane. If you do find a camel on your tail, um, and you think it has the energy advantage, then you can easily scissor, out scissor that camel, that is turning left and right, left and right repeatedly, uh, because of the DL1's fantastic roll rate, very, very good roll rate. Um, its spin recovery is relatively benign compared to the camel. The camel left-hand spin is a complete pain in the arse, and if you're at low altitude in the camel, you're basically dead, as it would have been in real life. You see here, I'm just flying against the AI. I started uh, with an energy advantage, and uh, the camel has a lower energy than I have, so I can very easily outturn him uh, and slip those wings off. Other things that it is good at, um, it is a tank. The DR-1 can sustain a ludicrous amount of damage compared to other aircraft. I don't know if this is still historically accurate or not, but what I do know is that it's uh, very hard to snip the wings off of the DR-1. It's small. Um, relatively, it's sort of kind of boxed together, so quite hard to hit in that respect. And also, it's very easy to survive crashes compared to other um, other planes. You'll find on multiplayer servers, DR1 pilots, even when they are shot down, will very often be able to glide down, glide down and survive. Um, you can see here the snap roll. I love snap roll in here when I get a bandit on my tail. Um, to do this, you want full aileron in, in one direction and full rudder in the opposite direction. Very easy to do the DR1, um, and again, very easy to um, rec uh, recover after that. It's also got twin guns. Let's not forget about those twin Spandau machine guns. The only plane that can really match it to some extent is the Sopwith Pup uh, in the sim. Um, however, the Sopwith Pup has, Pup has that single uh, Vickers machine gun that always feels like it has a bit of a stuttery, low rate of fire. So the DR1, great guns, fantastic maneuverability, um, relatively benign in those spins, um, a couple of foibles but not many. Another thing it can do brilliantly is prop hit. So when you are attacked by those pesky boom zoomers, um, it can sit on its nose very very well, very much like um, the Fox D7. Um, I think I'm going to do another video just demonstrating um, a few techniques for um, taking on pesky boom and zoom pilots like myself. Generally, I won't take on a DR1 uh, in multiplayer and if I know the pilots uh, who are flying against in particular. Um, it, because of its incredible tight turn, it's very, very difficult to dive and get that shot in. Even if do, you do get those shots in, um, you may hit their fuel tank, in which case they'll probably glide down and land safely um, when they're gliding down. Again, um, if they're scissoring, it's very, very hard to get in enough shots to, um, to do significant damage, or at least to stop them from surviving. Um, I guess one of the things that annoys me about the DR1, and it's just one of those things in, uh, in Rise of Flight multiplayer, is just how many people fly it. In real life, um, the DR1 was relatively rare. If you look at the number of, say, um, Albatross D5s or, or D7s on the front line, uh, the DR1 was very much a speciality plane flown by a select handful of pilots um, like the legendary uh, Werner Voss already mentioned. Uh, part of the problem was the uh, lubricating oil and uh, towards the end of the war there was quite a shortage. Um, and it also suffered from structural failures early on in its operational life. There were some incidents of the Fokker uh, shedding its wings um, during high G manoeuvres, uh, apparently to do with problems with glue or poor quality glue in the factory. So kind of problematic. Um, it's a bit of a troll aircraft to some extent, but it's in the sim, so why wouldn't you use it? Um, and if I'm honest, I, I suppose um, it's somewhat of a compliment to the DR1 that I learnt to boom and zoom simply because I got fed up of losing in, uh, in, in turn fights against the DR1 in multiplayer. It was very, very rare that I would beat a DR1 against a good um, uh, turn pilot like someone like uh, Ace Rimmer, um, fantastic pilot, or Morrow. One of those guys, kind of suicide taking them on in a turn fighter. I hope you found that useful. As I've said, I'm very much a beginner to the DL1 after all these years. Um, we have a new uh, version of Rise of Flight, very exciting, coming later this year in 2018, uh, being ported to the uh, Battle of Stalingrad engine, and I expect the flight model will be kept uh, very similar, so hopefully a lot of this will still be useful. Thanks so much for watching as ever, salute to you all and see you in the skies.